These are the Chat City interviews from 103.2 Preston FM. Katie Perry there, so uh, hope you enjoyed that one. And it's Chat City on this Tuesday morning, and nice to welcome my um, first guest live in the studio. It's Sue Blackhurst, and Sue is from Suzy Q Photography. So, Sue, a very good morning to you. Good morning to you, Huey. And um, Suzy Q Photography, tell us a little about the world of photography then at the moment. I mean, at this time of year, I just mentioned I was away in Malta last week. And I must have taken hundreds of photographs that I must have a look at some time and see, uh, you know, if I actually captured what I was looking at through the lens. So what, what about yourself? I mean, how did you get involved in photography? Gosh, well, I sort of had a, a, you know, a long journey to get here, I think. I started on the other side of the camera, as in I was a makeup artist, but always found it fascinating. I just love photography. I love looking at pictures and just found it a very interesting profession and you know over the years I've been I think as most people class themselves an amateur photographer and um, had the camera taking the pictures but not really had the technical knowledge so went to college got the technical side of it sort of you know complement what I was doing practically and it sort of pulled it all together and sort of been going now for a good two years as a you know professionally full-time right and we did meet you were in the studio in January and there were a few people I were talking to after sadly some of them who'd missed uh, part of the interview and uh, I know I asked you this question then because they were saying, well, how difficult is it for, d- do people look at a female photographer different as they would to a female? Is is there a, a, a different kind of um, professional outlook in that respect? As in taking the photograph? Mm, yes. Um, gosh, I've got to be careful here. No, I, <laughs> I don't think, no, th- there's certainly no difference. You know, it's like a chef. You know, to be honest, the majority of chefs tend to be male. Um, I think the majority of photographers tend to be male. It doesn't make you a better photographer to be female. I think you do have an advantage, though, if you are doing particularly babies and children, not because you're a better photographer, but you do get a better affinity with the child. And it really is important to build that relationship. You know, it's so important to, to engage with the child or the baby and I think ch- females generally do have that. Weddings as well, I think females, the only age they have there is we tend to get a little bit, oh, wow, with the dress and the girls. And you look at hair and makeup, um, whereas the guys may look pure at the composition, whereas we tend to look maybe a little bit deeper. It's not right. that it's better photography, but maybe you just look for things. Not always. I know. I, it's I, an advantage. I do like a statement on your website that I was looking at. I don't capture what people look like. I capture who they are. I want you to say it's just them. Absolutely. And I think that's it. You know, people do take photographs and of the family. You know, I've got two children and I know for years I, you know, would take a picture and just get a photograph, which was capturing the, um, what they were doing, playing on a swing, playing in the garden, running through a field. And it would just be to say that's what they were doing. I try and take it that step further. And it's mm-hmm. waiting for that moment when they turn around and they look at you without being aware that you've actually taken a photograph but it really is them it's a look in the eye it's just it's just something they have about the face and you know I can take two three hundred images in one shoot quite easily and then I will probably knock down 50% very easily before I do the viewing and then go down again to maybe have the final 50 let's say for the family to go through as a maximum number and you do you do find the parents look and go oh look at that it's just them and it's not mm. necessarily because it shows being pretty or whatever. It just captures who that child is. And I know these days we all talk about social media and everybody uses social media. But there's something very special about getting that photograph album out and looking at photographs of people in, you know, days gone by, maybe people who are no longer around. And there's some special quality, isn't there, about photographs that bring that memory alive i mean lots of people including myself uh i'm a big one for memories of music music will bring years alive to me or where i was when i first heard that song but there's something really special about that photograph that you keep it definitely, definitely. I mean, you say about music, you know, they say you don't remember the song, you remember where you were when you heard that song and the people you were with and what you're doing. And, and I think a photograph does exactly the same. You look back at an album and it, it, 
evokes what you were doing, who was there, the memories. And it's so important. My children, you know, 10 and 11, and they're growing up fast. And there have been phases of their life where I've missed mm. because we've been so busy at work and everything else. And six or 12 months can go by. And I look back and I go, I didn't miss, I mean, I missed them doing my son plays tennis. And I've realized that for the past 12 months, I've no photographs of him playing tennis. So I need to get back. But it's a huge chunk that when he grows older, that to say that's what you did when you were 10 years old or and so it's really important to capture memories because it's only when they've gone that you realize the importance of them and of course you were there for the switch on of the lights this year yes. in uh, blackpool and i was looking at the photographs that you'd done uh of some of the stars who were appearing um uh, yeah, it was yeah. a great night. It rained, or you have to say it rained, and we all got drenched, and I did look very much like a drowned rat. <laughs> but the atmosphere was fantastic. You know, events, I do love doing events. They are just, you know, it's fantastic because it's real, it's live. You know, I think you hear lots of actors talking about, you know, television, and they all say they like doing it on, you know, on stage, like performance, because you get that instant feedback. I do love it when, you know, you've got the crowd performing and the artists performing. It's a great buzz, and lots of other photographers. There's a bit of banter going on and there's lots of pushing and shoving to get the best spot. <laughs> but but it's great. You know, Gary Barlow was there, Jonathan yes, of Ross, course. Uh, Last Breath, the band were there, Supporting Act, Eliza Doolittle. So it was, it was just a great atmosphere, great names. And you're up and you're so close to these people. So some real nice photographs of Gary Barlow that I was looking at. Yes, yes. And in my studio, I've got a huge sort of about uh, six foot high image of Gary Barlow. <laughs> you walk downstairs and I uh, can stroke his ankles Yes, as I, as, I, as I walk past him, as I walk underneath him. Yeah, it was, it was great. You get a great picture. And it's a great kudos as well to be able to say that you photographed yes. people like that. You know, this year with us, Tom Jones. So I'll be there. I was Tom going Jones. to ask about that. So you're going to be there? I'll yes. put Lytham Green. Yes. Well, I, I work for... Radio Wave, I do all their photography for them, and they right. they they um they host the night for Tom Jones. So I'll be there on behalf of Radio Wave, which is fantastic because again you get to spend the day there, and you know you get to know the acts, talk to them, and they have the meet and greets that you photograph. So you're there when people have won prizes to come and 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 spend time or have the photograph taken with Tom Jones. So when you're when you're doing photographs of the like of Gary Barlow and of uh, Sir Tom Jones, do the, do you then uh, have a critical eye when you look at photographs that other people have taken of uh, the stars on the same night? <gasps> Gosh, no, I don't think I have a critical eye. I think it's more a case of I look and I go, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm up there and I like my images. It, it, it's, it's, it's art. Photographs are art. Yeah. And it's all down to personal opinion. I don't critique anyone else's work. I look and I, I try and learn from something maybe they've done. I see something they've got and I go, oh, next time I'll try and capture that. But generally, so far, I'm happy. I, I look at my work and I go, yeah, I got what I wanted. <laughs> So, so how many kind of uh, snaps could you take, say, of uh, when Gary Barlow was performing? Would you just keep firing the shutter off? Often you can do. Um, you, there's a rule for events that you can only actually photograph for the first three songs. So yes. they may do six or seven at least, but you can only be there for the first, uh, the first three. And you're at the front of the stage in the press pit, which is right in front of the stage. And obviously you've got the crowd behind you. So you're in their way as well. So it's a way to get you, you off. You have to then clear the area. Um, and at the start, you go mad. You just click and you can take two, three, four hundred quite easily. Um, but then by the time they get to the third song that they're doing, you sort of get a little bit more um, controlled and you wait for the moment. You know what they're going to do. You watch how they move around the stage. You watch where they move the microphone so it's not covering the face. And you really then make sure you get those critical images that you're after. But at the start, you just go bonkers. Right. And you click away. So it was actually uh, you working in makeup that started you in photography. It wasn't something that, you know, somebody gave you a camera as a small child and off you went into the sunset. No, no. Looking back, I wish they had. But uh, no, I, I always, my dream as a child was always to be a makeup artist. I wanted to work in television. Yeah. That's all I ever wanted to do. Yeah. Well, actually, no. I had a stay, stage I wanted to be a vet. And then a vet told me what they had to do. And I changed my mind very quickly. Um, but no, I wanted to be a makeup artist. And, and I, I did it. I lived in London and I worked with some great names. And 
you know, I, I think everything in life's for a reason. I, I do think that you do jobs that you look back on and think, mm. I know why I did that. And I worked with some great photographers and on some great shoots and travelled the world on uh, various jobs and for doing you know, swim, swimwear companies and fashion shoots. Um, I worked with Bruce Oldfield and the Manuels. So, you know, there were some great names out there that I, I worked alongside. But now work on the other side that was an advantage yes because what i see through the camera is what i used to do so i know what i'm looking for right and out of all the photographs that you've taken since you've been a professional photographer do you have that one that is your favorite uh, i'm sure there are many but is the one that has become you know you look at it and there's something special about that photograph i think that you know i've got one of gary barlow that i do love but that's because it's just iconic and it's gary barlow not right. because i just go it's an amazing photograph <laughs> it's the one that i look and it captures him singing and i do like that one um my daughter i have to say my daughter poppy loves the camera i'm very fortunate that she's quite photogenic and she loves the camera yes so I, she loves having a photograph taken my son hates it he tends to shy away a little bit but my daughter does enjoy having a photograph taken so the ones of her where i know again it's just her I'll take an image and I'll look and I just go, that is just who she is. Um, and she's on the front of my, I've got a brochure on my business cards. And I use her a little bit as a, a bit of an iconic picture. Right. And uh, you've now got your own photographic studio? Yes, I have. That's in Broughton, at the traffic lights in Broughton, um, just by the Gate of Bengal restaurant. And I've been in there now a good six months. And it's fantastic. I mean, it, it really is great. It's great to have a shop front and a base. Mm. But I do all sorts of photography. And we're starting now to actually run sort of uh, photographic workshops in there right. as well. Um, I work very closely with a guy called Dave Easton, who's a photographic lecturer. And we do weddings, etc., together, which is great when you need two people. Um, but what we get a lot of inquiries about are people who get the SLR camera and they just keep it on sort of automatic the whole time. Yes. And they just have a camera. <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah, a camera's <laughs> worth hundrands of pounds yes, and they don't the do feeling. anything with it. Yeah. You know, it's like having a Ferrari and never taking it out of first gear. <laughs> you That's know? right. So what we do is sort of get them and show them how to use the camera. Start off right the, at the very beginning. So if you have an SLR camera and you're there and you are one of the thousands of people that keeps it in automatic, we'll just give you the confidence to take it off that mode and teach you a little bit about aperture, shutter speed, ISO, just the basics to start off with. Mm. And also running workshops in the studio as well because people have the camera and you know want to learn a bit more about using lighting and studio work. And so we're running workshops for that as well. And makeup lessons. I have a fantastic makeup artist called Brooke. Yes. And we're running makeup lessons. So it's really busy. It's just at the moment. There's so much going on. You know, exciting times as well. And it really does make a difference, does it? Because as you say, so many people do just keep it on auto and just click away. But by knowledge of the different apertures and how to use the camera, I take it it really does make a, a big difference to just shut pressing the shutter on auto it, yeah it, it does you know i'm not saying that on auto you can't take a great picture you can and the automatic has a purpose and there are times you know every professional photographer will have a moment where they just go whack it into auto and just get the picture because of, of time pressures not often but there will be a time but creativity you can do so much when you take it off that setting you know particularly in things like low lighting you know it's night time there's fireworks um or when you're doing maybe children playing sport you know i went to watch my son have a rugby match last week and I had to change the settings to capture the moment of them running yes. and the ball moving to actually freeze frame it so when you understand the settings you can just do uh, so much more Right. And um, one of the things I, I was going to ask about is why, why do you think there are so few females who come into photography? I mean, it, it is a specialised art, isn't it? Because it definitely is an art, photography, isn't it? Um, I, I don't know about so few females. You know, I, I, I see female names crop up quite a lot, but there are definitely more males that do it. I don't know the reason why. Maybe it's because it is tough. It is tough. You know, there is a lot of work that goes into building up your business. You know, you've got to be out and about all the time and, and pitching for work. It, it, you know, there is a lot of competition out there. And I'm not saying that females don't do that at mm. all. But, um, 
you know, it takes confidence. It takes, you know, that ability to, to just go into places, pick up the phone and, and, and trying to get the work. Sometimes I see females don't do that. Um, but maybe they just, I don't know. It's, it's a great, it's a great profession. It's a great profession for females, but you do spend a lot of time on your own as well. Mm. Well, Sue, uh, as I said, I was looking at uh, your Facebook this morning and uh, your homepage. So tell our listeners where they can find out more about you. Oh, great. Um, the Facebook's a great way. I post up there quite regularly. And that is Susie Q Photography. That's actually under my name. I think you go to facebook.com forward slash Susie Q Blackhurst. And that's S-U-S-I-E. I've got a website, which is the W's Susie Q Photography dot co dot UK. Um, I'm on Twitter. I'm, I'm learning Twitter. I'm getting oh, a little well bit done. better. Yes, I am. I, I've just been twittering that you're in the studio. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, on Twitter, and that's at Susie Q Photos. Um, or you can phone me. You know, that's a great way now. You know, um, 07970 If you just want to chat, you've got your camera and you want a bit of advice, feel free. I'll do whatever I can to help. There you are. Well, uh, have you had the opportunity yet to, to photograph Will Young at all? No, I've not. I uh, think uh, Ollie Mers, I said last time I was in, wasn't yes, it? Yeah, yes. no, no. So if, if, if they come in for a chat with you, Huey, I do expect we'll to get a pa- call. We'll pass them your way. You, uh, can, come in, <laughs> you can come in and take some photographs. Cause I'll that one with I'm, you. Go- I'm going to play Will Young now. So, Sue, can I thank you for coming in this morning? You're very welcome. Thank, thank you for you. having me. If you've got news, views, or events you'd like to share with us and the Chat City team, why not give us an email? Chatcity at preston.fm.